probably the most important thing you can do is exercise and do it properly. Professor G, maybe the most important question when it comes to MS, why is it important to start treatment early? Because it's about prevention. Uh, we know that from natural history studies, the vast majority, and I'm talking 95 plus percent of people with MS will become disabled. The whole aim is to start treatments as soon as possible, stop the damage from occurring. What is escalation therapy and how is it different from maintenance or immune reconstitution therapy? There's quite a few different strategies, but the two licensed ones where we have therapies available for are uh, drugs are called maintenance treatments have to be given continuously. Uh, then we have the so-called immune reconstitution therapies, and these are therapies that basically deplete the immune system. They're given as short courses. They deplete the immune system, hopefully kill off and destroy all the autoimmune cells that cause MS and allow the immune system to recover. And when it comes back, MS has gone away. Or the regulatory mechanisms come back and the immune system keeps those autoimmune cells at check, and, but MS goes into long-term remission. You only need two courses or maybe three courses and you don't need any other treatment. Whereas a maintenance treatment, you've got to give it continuously, indefinitely, essentially. Uh, and as soon as you take the treatment away, MS can come back. In the maintenance treatment category, there are different levels of efficacy. So we have what we would call tier one, which is moderate efficacy. We have tier two, which is intermediate. And we have tier three, which is high efficacy. And what happens is the more efficacious they are, the more side effects. The average time on each tier is about four and a half years. So, you know, if you really a person who's got quite bad MS and you need the top tier, you know, it may take you a few years to get diagnosed. Four years on tier one, four years on tier two. By the time you get to your uh, top tiers, you've had the disease 10 years and you've acquired all the damage. So that's kind of why a lot of us are beginning to say, well, maybe we should flip the pyramid. In other words, put that individual on the top tier straight away. And that's what's called flipping the pyramid is we take the highest efficacy therapy and we give it in the beginning. And that's particularly for people who have what we call a poor prognostic profile. When we look at them, I think, goodness me, they, they've acquired damage already. The MS looks very, very active. Let's not take a chance on four, you know, these four years, four years before we get to the top tier. Let's give them the top tier straight away. So if we agree that early intervention is important, can you define early? If it takes someone two years to get a diagnosis, have they missed their optimal treatment window? One thing you've got to realize is there's a big asymptomatic period. Before you have your first attack uh, with MS, the disease has been there for a while. And we think maybe up to 10 years in some people. The lucky people who come to, are the ones that come to you with their first lesion causing symptoms and they've got or the, the second or third lesion and their scans look really quite good. And I think it's just uh, luck. So, yes, yeah, so early is how quickly you can get to the beginning of the biological disease. Uh, and so the earliest you can get there, I suppose, is in people who've got asymptomatic disease, but we don't screen the population for it. In the future, maybe we'll have a blood test and we could do that. But at the moment, we, we, let, we really have to re rely on the first symptoms. As a patient, we need to weigh things like side effects, risk tolerance, family planning, lifestyle, even access to costly medications. How do you help your patients prioritize these considerations and choose the treatment that's right for them? It's very important that the person is educated, educated, educated. In other words, they understand what MS is, why we're treating it, and what our treatment target and treatment aims are. It's all got to be personalized. So there is no right or wrong answer. As a patient, I, I know from my own experience how important it is to have your team members be on the same page with you know, risk tolerance and, and treatment philosophy. So Professor G, in addition to a disease modifying therapy, what can people with, who are diagnosed with MS do right away to influence the long-term effects of MS? Probably the most important thing you can do uh, from a scientific perspective is exercise and do it properly. But also oh, clearly diet, uh, clearly not smoking, making sure your sleep hygiene is intact. Try not to take too many other medications that affect how the brain functions. I'm particularly against these drugs called anticholinergics. These are drugs used for the bladder. Antihistamines, they all affect uh, the cholinergic system in the brain. They actually slow down how the brain works, for example. Take action as early as possible. Educate yourself about available treatments and lifestyle changes. Practice a healthy diet and lifestyle. Thanks so much for watching. For more content on MS, from treatments and diagnosis to mobility and sex, check out the rest of MS 101.